Hi everyone. Today's video is going to be a little different. I wanted to share my personal cystic fibrosis experience with you. I know many of our friends know that I have CF, uh, but they may not know what that means or what my experience has been up to this point. Uh, I also wanted to make it clear that I'm, I'm not in any way looking for sympathy. Uh, I am very lucky to have uh, a, a mild form of CF. And there are people out there who are exponentially worse off um, than I am. Um, so my goal here is to raise awareness for the disease by sharing what I went through. Uh, I had a much easier time than most people. So as I tell my story, keep in mind that most CFers have to go through much more. Um, and now before I really get started, if you don't know what cystic fibrosis is, it's a genetic disorder that affects mostly the lungs, but also the pancreas, liver, kidneys, and intestines. So I'll let you Google it from there for uh, more specific information. And also I want to let you know I am reading this, so please forgive me, forgive me as my eyes bounce all over the screen. Uh, if I don't do this, I'll lose my train of thought and go off on some random unrelated stories and tangents and things so uh, bear with me when Sarah and I got married uh, we agreed to wait until I turned 30 before we started trying to have kids so when that day came uh, we got started and after a year with no luck uh, we noticed some issues that we thought might be uh, playing a part in preventing us from conceiving. So we went to a fertility specialist and they ran a couple of tests on Sarah and the, the one obligatory test on me and I'll save you the details and just tell you that I ended up being the one with the fertility issues. Uh, so that doctor, the fertility specialist, sent me to a urologist and once again skipping over some details, some TMI, the urologist quickly determined that I must be a carrier for cystic fibrosis. Uh, his words were, there's no way you have full CF because you're healthy, over 30, and haven't had any issues. So you're probably just a carrier. Uh, so he had a basic genetic test done to determine if I was in fact a carrier, and after about a week the test came back and it was confirmed that I did have one of the most common genetic mutations associated with CF. So, he sent me to a genetic specialist so I could learn what all that meant. A few days later, I got a call from the Cystic Fibrosis Clinic to schedule my appointment. Uh, it was during that call that I was told there was still a chance I could have CF and that I may need to undergo more testing. Uh, and at the appointment, the CF doctor explained that there are thousands of genetic mutations and that can cause cystic fibrosis, and the genetic tests that the urologist ran only tested for 25 of the most common mutations. Uh, the CF doctor wanted to test me for the other possible mutations, as well as administer, administer a sweat test and a kidney ultrasound. Um, that meant more blood work, and two of the most interesting lab experiences of my life. Uh, but when I left the CF clinic that day, the nurse told me, whatever you do, do not Google cystic fibrosis. Only look at the CF Foundation website for information. So, of course, I Googled it before I had even left the parking lot. Um, that turned out to be a huge mistake because I got myself good and worked up and freaked out. Um, I went into all this thinking I was just a carrier and now there's a chance I could have full-on CF. Uh, this was the start of a pretty rough time for me emotionally. Uh, fear really took over my life uh, because there aren't many people in my life that have a good understanding of cystic fibrosis. And because I wanted to look strong under the pressure, I didn't really talk about it. And that meant I really didn't have a lot of support. So... This is where the story gets a little funny. Um, and first I'll start with my kidney ultrasound. It is what I call the, the sexy ultrasound. The purpose of this test was to check and make sure I have two kidneys. Um, 
only having one kidney can sometimes be an unfortunate side effect. So for that test, they make you drink like 24 ounces of water before you go. And you can't go to the bathroom because they have, you have to have a full bladder for the test. So of course, I get to the lab and I need to pee worse than I've ever needed to pee before. And uh, after they made me wait for what seemed like 15 minutes, but was probably more like two minutes, uh, a nice nurse takes me back to a dimly lit room with the ultrasound equipment set up in the corner. Uh, <laughs> she points to a little room off to the side and tells me I can go get undressed in there and hands me a gown to change into. And my understanding of the human body is uh, very basic. But I, I know where my kidneys are, or, you know, where they're located, so I'm not real sure why I need to get undressed. I'm thinking, you, you're doing a kidney ultrasound, couldn't I just lift my the back of my shirt up, you know? But, um, <laughs> you know, but this lady's a professional, so I just kind of accept that she knows what she's doing. <laughs> and I get changed into the gown and go sit on the table, and the nurse pulls out her phone and turns on soft music and then dims the lights a little more. And I start to kind of, you know, I'm, I'm like, what's going on here? So uh, at this point, I, I start to fight back the thought that this is turning into an adult film. And uh, <laughs> just assume that she's trying to make me comfortable. Just trying to make sure I'm comfortable for the, you know, for the ultrasound or whatever. And um, she's getting ready to get started. And I look towards her and say, okay, we're looking for two. And she says, testicles? And I said, what? No, kidneys. I have two testicles. And then we both stop. She gives me a little bit of a confused look and then starts shuffling through her papers and says, um, I'll be right back. You can go ahead and change back into your clothes. <laughs> so the rest of that story goes as it should. I got the right ultrasound, <laughs> finally got to pee, and I do have two kidneys, so that poor nurse was mortified when she came back and extremely apologetic. Evidently, my ultrasound and someone else's ultrasound information got switched. My name was on the file, but someone else's procedure was listed, so I'm glad I kind of made that comment before we got started. Otherwise, I, she would have been looking for my kidneys in the wrong place. So the next test was a sweat test. Um, this was not as funny so much as it was bizarre, just because of you know what had had to do. So I had to go to Children's Hospital in downtown Dallas to have this done uh, because it's not like blood work that you can do get done anywhere. Uh, you have to go to a place that has the equipment to do this. So this test measures the amount of salt chemicals in sweat, and it's done to help diagnose cystic fibrosis. Normally sweat on the skin surface contains very little sodium and chloride, but people with cystic fibrosis have two to five times the normal amount of sodium and chloride in their sweat, so they're saltier than other people. Uh, so <laughs> this test is conducted by applying a medicine that makes the skin sweat to a spot on your wrist. Then electrodes are hooked up to your wrist over the medicine. A mild electric current is sent into your arm and the medicine makes you sweat in that spot. Now that's the WebMD explanation and that's probably what happened to me. But what I remember was being hooked up to what looked like a car battery with little jumper cables coming off of it. And uh, I, it, it was just like jumping off a car. I'm pretty sure I'm now qualified to run this test on other people. Uh, it was even they even had little red and black uh, cables and uh, electrodes. The little things they hook to your arm are red and black, just like they are on a car. So anyway, once the nurse hooked me up, uh, I asked her, you know, will this hurt? Because <laughs> I'm she hooked me to a car battery. I said, well, will this hurt? And uh, she said, no, but I won't lie to you. It's not going to be pleasant. 
And at that point, she flipped the switch like the mad scientist in every Frankenstein movie you've ever seen. I may have heard her laugh a little. So this part of the test went on for 10 long minutes in each arm. So they do one arm, you have to wait, you have to be electrocuted for 10 minutes, and then they hook you up, you hook up your other arm, and then they do it again. So I won't lie to you, it wasn't pleasant, but thanks to a little TV in the corner, I was able to focus on something other than being electrocuted. So after that part is done, they wrap your wrist up with lots of gauze. I'm talking like lots. You have big, noticeable superhero armband type amounts of gauze on. And they're on both wrists. And then they send you back out into the waiting room where you wait for 30 minutes while your wrists sweat underneath all that gauze. And that's really not that bad uh, unless you're a 30 year old man sitting in a room full of children who are all waiting to have other tests done on them, then it's just a little bit awkward. So anyway, once your 30 minutes is up, the gauze is removed, they take the little piece of gauze that's been absorbing your sweat and they put it in a little capsule and it's sent off to have the sodium and chloride measured and you go home and wait. And depending on how salty the skin is, uh, the, the, how salty the sweat is, excuse me, they're able to ter determine whether or not you have cystic fibrosis. About a week after all that, I got a call from the CF doctor with the test results. The uh, sweat test was inconclusive, so he wanted to run a full genetic test that would test all of, test for all of the genetic mutations, not just the 25 that the previous genetic test tested for. So I agreed, and the next day I had more blood drawn, which was something I was getting very used to at this point. Um, after about two weeks, the CF doctor called me again, this time to tell me that they did, in fact, find a second mutation. Um, however, this mutation was very rare, and so rare, in fact, that he needed to consult with other physicians on how to move forward with my treatment. Um, now, about a week after that, I was back at the lab, having more blood drawn, giving a stool sample, getting a bone density scan, and finally a chest CT. Um, all the test results came back normal for a th regular 31-year-old man. Um, there was a small amount of damage in one airway in my lung, but other than that, things looked good. The doctor told me that based on the test results and my personal history and the type of mutation pairing that I have, he doesn't expect, or he didn't expect my CF to affect my the CF to affect my lifespan. Uh, they gave me an albuterol inhaler. Uh, with an acapella, which is this d d device. Um, I blow into this and it vibrates my chest, and which helps not loose any mucus that's building up. So I, after I use the inhaler, I have to blow into this for about 20 minutes and it's supposed to loosen and shake loose any mucus that's building up in my lungs that could lead to infection. Uh, my other option is to run. I use the inhaler and then I can go run um, for 20 minutes. So I try to run a couple miles after I use my inhaler uh, every day and that's supposed to work even better than this device. So I end up doing that more often than not because it's good for everything. I'm running. Since that time, my life has changed somewhat. Um, because of my genetic mutation, pairing is rare. Uh, there isn't a ton of information out there, and if you remember, I said my doctor wasn't sure if I needed treatment or not. So in my mind, there's a lingering possibility that something could develop one day. Uh, I've decided to treat myself by maintaining a healthy lifestyle and really focusing on staying strong and fit so my body is in the best position to fight off any infections that may come along. Uh, I do this in addition to the inhaler and acapella sessions that I do daily. Emotionally, it's depressing. Um, again, my CF isn't bad. 
so far I haven't been hospitalized, I don't need to carry oxygen, I've lived a full life. However, those two letters, C, F, are always in the back of my mind. Someone who's been cured of cancer never really stops thinking about that cancer. Uh, it may sink below the surface of their mind for a period of time, but it always comes back up. And I have a son now, and I worry every time he coughs. Uh, I know they're normal baby coughs, but my mind makes them into something worse. Uh, Sarah isn't a carrier of cystic fibrosis, so at worst, the, the worst Gabriel could just be a carrier. Um, Sarah and I both would need to have a genetic mutation in order for him to have full cystic fibrosis. And that's not the case, but I still worry about it. And also, you may not know this, but cystic fibrosis is really a lonely disease. CFers can't get together in person uh, because of the immune system issues that CF causes. After I was diagnosed, I wanted to meet other CFers in my area and see what sort of support systems there were. Uh, but sadly, well, we can't have weekly meetings or anything like that. And because we don't always look sick, or in my case, I rarely ever look sick, people don't consider us to actually be sick. Um, it's hard for me personally because my friends and my family don't think of me as sick. So helping to raise awareness of this disease isn't always at the forefront of their minds. Um, but I've connected with several CFers through social media and we're able to offer each other encouragement and Sarah really keeps an eye on me. She can tell when it's starting to weigh on me and she's good about helping me retreat from it and take my mind off of it for a little while. Now, that being said, I have a family now, and I don't take a single day for granted. I've met a lot of awesome CFers, and they're the most positive people you'll ever meet. Even when they're going through some truly hard times, uh, they haven't had the opportunities that I've been blessed with, and that keeps me grounded. I don't complain about the blood work, and I try to find the humor in as many of the doctor visits and the tests that I can. I'm not as bad off as some of my CF friends, but they keep smiling through it all, and that pushes me to smile as well. And because I'm capable of doing more, I owe it to them to help raise awareness about the disease. I'm not asking for an ice bucket challenge or a 5K. I'm just asking that you remember cystic fibrosis. If you know me, that means you have a friend with a disease that doesn't have a cure yet. And I would appreciate it if you would remember me, as well as the thousands of other CFers around the world. For more information about cystic fibrosis, you can visit the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's website at cff.org. Um, on that site, you can also find out ways to help raise awareness as well as money for research. I appreciate you watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.